All right, it's Charlie Craven, and I am about to tie for you a partridge caddis. This is a, uh, a Mike Lawson pattern um, that is a, uh, a spent, spent caddis pattern, so it's going to have kind of flattened wings. Um, but that being said, I fish this uh, a lot of times just uh, um, just as an adult caddis. It, it'll imitate that just as just as well. Um, so what I'm starting with is a Tiemco 100 SPBL size 16, um, and I've got some gray. Uh, 30 to near 18 knot in nano silk here. Um, you know, the exact color. You don't actually need nano silk for this. This just happened to be in my bobbin from the last fly, so um, there's nothing that we're going to tie particularly uh, that needs a lot of thread strength here. But um, I'm going to start this thread a couple eye lengths back from the hook eye, and I'm going to wrap all the way back to the bend, and then I'll bring the thread about midpoint. And we're just going to dub a simple body, and we're going to use. Um, I'm going to use some caddis green super fine, um, but obviously whatever color whatever color you like. Um, and I'm going to put this on the thread pretty thin. Um, you know, I always say that, um, but I like to have a thin strand that's very tight, um, and I just feel like I can build shapes um, a lot more accurately with a thin strand of dubbing. So what I'll do here is I'm actually going to start this dubbing up here at the front, about 75% point. And I'm going to wrap back to the bend. And then I'll fatten them up toward the back end. So I go about halfway up. And I'll cover that back half. And I'll taper down toward the front end. You see that dubbing got a little loose. I can just tighten it back up. About like so. So we've got a reverse taper. Uh, so a little fatter toward the back end. Now I'm going to, and that's uh, that's more accurate to the shape of a, of a caddis's body. Um, so we're going to go with that. Um, I made my thread base up to the hook eye and back again. And now for the wing, um, I'm going to use a couple of Hungarian partridge uh, feathers. And these are off, sort of off the shoulder. They're kind of a little, give you the good side here. Kind of mottled brown color. Um, and you want to look for feathers with good tips. And what I want to do here is oppose them and even the tips up so that the feathers are curving away from each other and they're about the same length. And then I can kind of strip the fibers down from there. So I've got something that looks like this. A little set of matched wings, maybe like what you would think of for an Adams. I'm going to take these two feathers, I'm going to set them on the hook, and I'm going to measure them about a shank length long. And I'm going to set them on the hook and I'm going to hold them in place. And I'm going to come up with a pinch wrap and catch those in place. And I'll make a little band of thread here. Now, one of the cool things that you can do, you can say I left those stems long, is I can use these stems to sort of adjust the base of the feathers and sort of mash them into position where they're flattened out. There's a little better angle. Flattened out along the sides of the fly. If you've got them a little too long, you can also pull down on these. Mine are actually in pretty decent shape as far as the, the length goes. But that's, I'm not getting the greatest angle here. Let me give you a little bit of focus there. That's our top view. That's our bottom view. So you can see how those wings are sort of spread out. Once I've got those in place, I'll anchor them down and trim those butt ends out. And I'll tie in a grizzly hackle. Um, and I want this about, you know, appropriately sized for the hook. So a size 16 hook here. I'm going to use a size 16 feather as well. And I'm going to tie this in right up at the base of the wing. And then for the thorax, we're going to use just a little bit of peacock curl. And I like to use peacock curl from the eye. Sorry about that. I just realized that wasn't focused back in. Um, so I'm going to take two or three strands from the eye. Um, they don't have to be tiny ones, but they're usually the prettiest ones. And I'm going to tie these in by their tip ends, right up to the base of the wing. Bring my thread right up to the eye. And then I'm going to palmer this, or wrap this peacock curl up to the eye and build the thorax. Just two, three turns. You can see that didn't take much. Tie that off with a couple turns and trim that out. Now I'm going to take my Grizzly hackle, and this I'm going to palmer forward through that peacock curl. 
and tie it, it off up here behind the eye and trim that center stem out. Just a few turns here to build a smooth thread head. Then I'll come in and whip finish. And that is our spent partridge caddis, Lawson's spent partridge caddis. Um, cool little bug, um, you know, a, a nice alternative. Sometimes you'll be, uh, um, you know, especially during the summer months. I just saw a couple weird hackle fibers over here that I don't like. I'm going to get rid of those. I don't want you thinking less of me. Those wings position, there we go. Um, Kind of a cool little bug during the summer, you know, you'll be fishing, you know, standard elk or caddis, something like that. Maybe you get fish that are uh, um, really keyed in on a caddis hatch, and uh, uh, they refuse that, that elk or caddis. So, um, so you got, you know, maybe uh, a caddis fall where they're laying eggs, and you've got spit caddis on the water, um, or you just need something a little more imitative. Um, and this is a good fly to go to in those situations. Um, it's not as buoyant as an elk or caddis, so it's not a great searching pattern as far as just uh, covering a lot of water, although it has, does have a nice hackle collar. Um, this is a nice flat water flat water fly. You got a fish tucked up under a bush kind of thing um, and he's just being a jerk. This is a good fly to throw at him. Um, one thing that you can do, and I usually leave them as they sit right here, um, but if you're fishing and you feel like you need it to sit lower on the water, you can take this hackle on the bottom and trim it off so that you've got a fly that sits a little bit more flush on the water. Um, so it'll sit a little bit more flat. Um, some guys like to trim the hackle off the top too, but I find that makes the fly a lot harder to see. So um, that's sort of how it ends up on, my, on the end of my line. If uh, if I need it to sit lower, I leave that hackle on top. Makes gives me a little something to look for. Um, but that's the spent partridge caddis. Hope you enjoyed that one. We've got more coming, so come back soon. We'll have uh, another video up before long. Thanks for watching. Take care.